America, CTO at Wifi. I was a plum evangelist a long time ago, like three years ago, and developer, maintainer of OX uh, uh, 10 installer, and so on, so forth, blah, 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 blah. But I just a plum user. Actually, I use plum to find excuses to come here, meet you guys every year, even though I failed for two in a row. Uh, who in here knows what a single page application is? Please raise your hands. Okay. Who, uh, who of you were at the keynote earlier today? Okay, so just to call this uh, presentation really short, basically Angular Universal is the solution. Thank you for coming, let's go home. Because, oh, Angular is, uh, uh, is the solution, for, Angular University is the solution for every single problem you have, and some you have no idea. It's really amazing, it's fantastic, and I never made it work. I remember Timo yesterday saying, oh, Eric did that. No, I did not. I'm not smart enough. Eric can do it. I can't. I tried, I failed miserably, so. Basically, I like the idea, it's important, but I cannot do it so far. But let's go back to the basics. When we talk about SEO, rendering is part of the problem, right? Honestly, it's not the biggest part or even the most challenging part. Of course, it's kind of depressing when you share a link to your amazing new app on Skype, and then you see a bunch of, uh, when Skype tries to, Oh, let me get a nice presentation with Scrap on the other side or on Slack and so on. But there are more things. First thing is content. Uh, I work in this small company in the past where they believe anything can be solved with marketing spending. So, okay, we create an MVP. We don't care that much about SEO because we have money. Buy advertising, put people on your side, everything is solved. But uh, I come from this other place, you know, plum community. I used to, to have my own company, and we dealt with customers that had no marketing money, but they required traffic coming from Google and other places. So, content, content is king. Okay, so. To get better ranking on Google, you need to fill all the for all the, uh, the the inputs on your form. Fulvio earlier today on his talk mentioned this uh, add-on called Collective Jackal. I never heard. I'm going to try it, but basically it tells you, oh, it's missing a summary in here. It's missing tags. It's missing uh, some uh, metadata you could put in there. So if you have good content, you use Plon as you always use, putting nice titles and so on, you get good results by default. Then we go for code standards, come on. Everybody knows, even guys that like SEO experts that you hire over the internet from India, even those guys know you put meta tags and everything happens, magic happens, right? So you need to put additional tags in there. There was this uh, crazy moment a few years ago that uh, for one of our customers, they were quite picky saying, you need to have all those tags. And honestly, I got a file with 10K of meta tags. The page did not have that much content. But meta tags was covered. But you see, rendering speed. Being mobile friendly, everything counts nowadays for Google. Google is kind of picky with that. And uh, sitemaps and robots. You know, you need to tell robots they are welcome. We love them. We want them to crawl our site. And usually, that's the kind of trick that you put your site live and you never, oh, I need to tell Google. No, but Google is going to find me. Yeah, eventually. But you can make your life easier. So, okay, that was not supposed to be here. Uh, no one from the board, so am I allowed to say fuck or not? Code of conduct, even Star Trek, they say fuck nowadays, so I don't think it's a problem. 
But uh, this community is awesome. Clone is amazing as a product, and Bonnie was ready for SEO. When I say ready, it's not like, oh, it's perfect, the silver bullet, but I had this uh, small, friendly competition with our friends of Drupal in Brazil, and I said uh, a few years ago, like 2012, Plone is so much better than Drupal out of the box. Let's play a game. Let's put aside the same site for a government initiative, one for the, uh, for the Drupal community, one for Plone. No add-ons, just content and playing uh, out of the box installation. We basically run circles around them. Bunch of links coming. Of course, we played some dirty tricks as well because we would not lose to them. But it worked. It worked. It was perfect. And most people have no idea, but you go to the site settings, you say, okay, here's your sitemap for free. Here's Dublin Core metadata, add more stuff. Everything's kind of there. You just need to fill the forms. And also caching, because that's also something that if you get a $5, uh, $5 uh, machine on DigitalOcean and put an uh, old Plone 4 site in there. You go and just activate memory cache. Don't worry about varnish and so on. It works. It's amazing. It looks fast. If you put Cloudflare in front, it's even better, but it's quite impressive how Plone got in terms of performance. But we're not talking about the Google Plone, because now we like new shiny things, so we like Angular. First thing, why Angular? Uh, anyone in here use React? Okay, Angular. I'll, I'll put this way. David, raise his hand, David Glick in there. On React, that says a lot. I, uh, I was told by smarter people than I am, like, yeah, React is so much better. But it requires better developers. And uh, until two years ago, I would say, oh, I hate front-end development and so on, because I, I'm really bad at it. And someone told me, oh, Angular is like, it's everything there. You, it's easy to get up and running and go there. It's more comfortable. Things break less, lie between Angular 2.0 alpha something and the final release, it was like, it's working. Oh, let's upgrade. It's not working. What happened? And then you go to change log and so on. But small things you need to do. I'm not talking about content. Come on, we know content is king. But semantic, HTML, you're writing your own templates now. You do not rely on clones. Things we do. Uh, uh, things actually someone in the Plone community did for us, you need to do by yourself. So if you love div, nested inside div, nested inside div, and things wasted there, could work, but it's better when you use those semantic tags we have nowadays. Also, basic metadata, you can put, I remember on Angular 2, it was, okay, you can change the title. Everything else, there are like 20 different tutorials. And they would work for one really specific version, and so on. And then we use that a few months later, not working. Read again. Nowadays, we have meta services. I think I implemented that a few weeks ago. So every time I resolve a route, and that's important because I found uh, another, another small issue with uh, Angular Artics. Every time I resolve the route and get the data, I update stuff before I go to the, the component view. Otherwise, what happens uh, with uh, Angular Artics? Angular Artics say, oh, another page view. The URL is about us, and the title is welcome to our company because it was the title of the previous one. So everything else was lost. Honestly, it took me a while to figure out why every single page view on Angular text for me was off by one. It's like the title from the previous page and the everything else from the new one. Uh, Twitter card, open graph, that's basic, right? Especially because when you share a link on uh, Twitter or on uh, 
Facebook or on Slack. Slack goes through Twitter and a Twitter card and the open graph tags. They look into this information to handle your page. So in your, in your Angular application, put this kind of stuff. And schema.org, in here I have an example. At Griffey, uh, as we are a B2B company, we really never care that much about or we need to get the best results on SEO because people know us because they know us because we provide services for everyone and their dogs as well. So, but schema.org about organization and uh, person and so on. In my previous company, every single listing, and we had thousands of them, would have all the information, all, everything about uh, when you could book the car, when you, where is the car, and so on and so forth. And when I would go to the uh, Google Web Masters 2, it was like a dream, like a bunch of lines in here, thousands of items for everything. But again, it will, uh, uh, mileage will vary uh, according to your business. Really, and speed, as I said, Eric can make Angular Universal work. He told me it's easy. I was not able to do it. I use PreRender.io. I'm going to show the code. It's quite simple. By the way, uh, the, the guy that created and maintained PreRender.io, he's really nice. If you deploy and it's not working, send him an email and say, oh, please move to Chrome Headless and do not use PhantomJS. Two minutes later, everything is working, and you're, oh, perfect. And, uh, and by the way, I'm not paying, so I felt really bad. <laughs> but in any case, I use server-side handling only for some uh, uh, user agents. And what Eric asked before, it's like, oh, Google could uh, penalize you. One thing you can do is basically say, okay, Google, Pass, but again, Skype bot, you're stupid. Here's a pre-handled page for you. And that's true, honestly. I, I forgot at some point to configure properly pre-handled AO. Google was fine with that. But I found out when sharing links on uh, Slack and sharing links on Skype. Uh, AOT and lace loads, it was something that took me a while to make it work, but the difference it's amazing. I got twice the speed, half the size for our briefy.co website. Caching, I'm going to talk more about that and responsive images a little bit more in the future. Uh, sitemaps and robots, come on, put robots on your site. Who in here has an Angular application without a robot uh, being served on the same Nginx? Raise your hand. Sorry, I found out today as well. That's, that's shameful. There's a bug in my Docker file and it's not being served. Sitemap, it's quite important. Basically, if you provide Bing and uh, Google and Masters tool with your sitemap, you get really early on problems and issues and they complain about the quality and you can work on it. Otherwise, you rely only on people finding you, putting link to your site, and so on. This is so low-hanging fruit. That's like, uh, uh, at simplest in the past, we would basically say, okay, let me take a look at your, your site. Put us at, uh, uh, add us to your uh, organization on uh, Webmasters too. What? Okay, we can help you, really. See, if you don't know about this, it's like step zero. How we did it? We use Angular, Prehender.io, Cloudflare is not mentioned here, but Cloudflare is really important for us. Uh, and then we use a bunch of solutions from our companies, things that we cooked in some way or other. If you want to see code, I can show code. Ruby in here can show the code. And uh, we are going to open source big part of it, so. It's quite uh, uh, easy if you want to see. API Gateway based on Varnish. Why? Because I have long running inside a Docker on a cluster Kubernetes. A 
call to the API, I cache the call. Because the second one, immediate. Third one, if I change the content, what I do, invalidate the cache. By the way, if I change the content, I invalidate the cache on Vernish, meaning the API call. I tell also Cloudflare. And the third one, I tell Prehender IO to, oh, try to cache, uh, try to handle me again. Meaning next time any bot arrives, there's a fresh new version. And that was, uh, I'm going to show the code, it's quite, quite simple. And uh, it goes a long way. CMS is this tool called Plone. It's basically Plone out of the box. Uh, there's a policy configuration package because I like to keep the code on the on the uh, on a Git repository. But it's basically dexterity through the web creation, and that's it. Uh, it's not really hard to to duplicate that. Then there's Tumblr, Tumblr is an image server. Who in here heard about Tumblr in the past? Yeah, because you were on my talk last year, even though I was not there. I'm going to, if we have time now, I'm going to do a, a little demo of Tumblr. If we do not, I have a lightning talk about a, a call, a content rules is Slack. What I'm going to do is like, instead of doing one live demo, I'm going to do three because live dangerously. So Tumblr basically solves the problem of scaling, cropping, and doing caching of your image. You can basically serve it from a different location. There are a bunch of uh, uh, add-ons, including ones like, OK, if the browser coming to get the image supports WebP, give WebP. Or apply automatically uh, uh, some kind of compression if it's a mobile device deliver uh, progressive images in here, and so on and so forth. Everything is done by our friends of the Brazilian Python community. And they, uh, they did that because they run uh, one of the largest uh, portals in Brazil. It's like huge news portal, and they serve millions of uh, images, images, different images every day. It's insane. And their company is basically getting their solution and selling you like, oh, I have this amazing image solution. Yeah, I know them. And a site map, microservice written in Pyramid, really simple, that basically talks to Plum, get the site map, talks to uh, some configuration, get the static routes, and deliver that to Google. This is the configuration for the header. It's a, a, a simple configuration. This is the block that actually does the magic. Try to find the file in the, in, the, uh, in the file system. You don't find, go to this block in here. Uh, I have to put this in here because of our environment, and especially because I have a, a local service we need to, to, to talk to. By default, do not send to pre handler Set in here the token. If it's a robot, and there's a list of User agents here in the center as well, but set prehender, escape it, prehender. Uh, if user agent is prehender, please do not use prehender, otherwise, you get into a crazy loop. If the static file, forget about it, and then make the call there. It's quite easy. And in here, if it comes a request for sitemap, sitemap 0001, send to this internal microservice that basically deals with uh, sitemaps. OK, second one, Cloudflare. We basically listen to events. Uh, if you're here in the previous talk, every time there's an event, we have a service that listens to it and purges stuff away. In here, purge on Cloudflare. In here, prehender I.O. So, the beauty of this is like, for us, we have 40 pages. If we change something, we can invalidate cache, cache manually anytime. For other companies that have, for instance, listings, they have 3,000, 4,000, and they change all the time. 
it's a different game. You need to have something like that just to keep everything uh, uh, working as expected. And we have this small service that runs Pyramid 1.9, latest Python. And uh, basically, it's a view that have an index adapter to generate sitemap index and then CMS adapter pointing to plum, static adapter, it's a bunch of small rules like, okay, slash imprint. All German companies need to have imprint on their site. And honestly, it's not something you change like every single week, so put on the front end. Or uh, any form you have, or even error pages if you want to, to be funny. Uh, static adapter in here and listening adapter. In, uh, we do not implement that, but in the previous company, basically these will talk to uh, to the API, the main API of the business, say get me all the car listings, order in this way, and get me also the information about the last modification. Get this cache from time to time, of course, and generate a new sitemap. Let me show you the code for this. It's like a Pyramid app. Three different routes. OK. Configuring here. The view is this one, sitemap view. It's going to be text XML. In some cases, compress, generate the sitemap. And it calls depending on the adapter and index sitemap, file name, the adapter I'm using, static, CMS, and here index sitemap, you see how, how uh, concerned we were with uh, coming back to this code, instead of having a template command, that's for, it's another file to maintain, put in here, content sitemaps, this is like, we have two at the moment, and just iterate, generate the sitemap index. For the static one, these are the routes we have on Angular that our clients uh, are only on Angular, no calls to the to Plone. Same thing. And Plone, I have some, uh, for Plone, we have different languages and so on, so far, even though we never implemented. and. Uh, what we implemented there was a browser view returning the results from the sitemap.xml.gz as JSON. And then there are some rules to make the call basically use virtual hosting mapping because I want all the, the URLs in sitemap being of my public uh, facing website instead of the internal plone service. And in here it's quite easy, but uh, there was another case in the previous company that I had to do some mangling with the data saying, okay, if the data has this name, uh, if the entry has this name, I know by default it's not this, do that, and so on. But message the data and generate uh, the, the, um, the sitemap. Okay, that being said, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for my friends in here, especially to Eric. Asko is not here, but Eric and Asko, uh, they are part of my daily development cycle with Plone and Angular. Because every time it's like, okay, I want to do this. I have no idea how to do it. I Google. The best result is either Asko when it's Plone or Angular, uh, or when it's Angular, it's Eric. To a point I was joking the other day, it's like, why do I waste my time? I basically should look for anything Eric did and implement. And uh, Huda knows this one. We are trying to basically break a monolithic Angular application to smaller things. Like we use this form library called MG Formly, and we implemented the material design on top of it. Let's give it back to the community. Oh God, it takes forever. But Looking what they did with uh, Plone REST API uh, SDK, it's possible to be done. I have faith, even though I do not have time. And uh, 
uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming. I'm available for any questions. If you want to see code, grab Ruda or myself. We're going to be here for the sprints as well. And questions. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? Do, do, do. Do, do, do. No? Responsive images. How you oh, timber. Okay, you said so. Okay, I'm going to do something I might regret later. Okay. <laughs> it's not about the picture. The picture is not that bad. Picture 2011 plan conference, right? In here, it's I'm running on my machine a plan uh, a timber server with uh, image from the file system, okay? If it was in production, the image would be on S3 or any crazy other setup. It's possible to load them from another site, but in here. So I'm basically saying original size, okay? But I want to get a scaled version. Let's say, 64 by 64, okay? We resize this, but that was easy. Let's get something like 600 by 200. That's done. Because if I keep playing with this, like, okay, by... It's really useful, right? This is basically what we do with Plum. If we start playing with different sizes, at some point, we end up with this. There are, any, uh, are many plugins that allow you to resize and crop up on the client, but one thing these guys at uh, Global, the guys that developed this, they found out is like, when you need to produce like 20 news articles per day with dozens of pictures. Sorry, the journalist really doesn't want to. Oh, let me try to crop. So, what you do in here is, you basically say, be smart, please. And now, Tembo knows what's important. Actually, cut my, uh, my bunny ears, not so, uh, so smart, but if I want to know exactly what happened, and in here I think, I basically say the bug. And it's really hard for you to see, but there's a bounty box in here, another one in here, a third one in here, and then it's using OpenCV. It knows, okay, there's faces in here. What should I do? So calculate an average in here and try to, to find the best possible matches. What if we're not talking about faces? It goes to the second uh, 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 mechanism is focal points. When you take a picture, select some focal points, it goes for the focal points and crop accordingly. And there's many types of, uh, uh, of filters. I'm, I do not remember, everything is configured by the URL, and in here you see it's written and safe because I'm not uh, using the signing algorithm, because otherwise it would take forever. But usually what you do in production, you come in here and you send uh, a signature for the URL to avoid denial of service, because someone could basically say, okay, let's try every single possible size and permutation. Also, you can add filters in here, or you can add filters by default. For instance, I want all images we produce to have a watermark, a really, really discreet watermark. Done. You basically add that to the configuration, every picture comes with a watermark. Or I want to blur images because I want to play a, play a prank on someone, I don't know. Or white balance, or whatever. One of the things we use, it's basically we optimize PNG files. And also there's one thing more, I think is this. 
300 by 200. It also has an endpoint telling you what the hell is happening. So origin, face detection, and so on and so forth. Honestly, this, if you, you host content that requires image, uh, images in large scale, this solution is like given. You have Docker uh, configurations for it, download, just say, okay, I want to load the image from here. I want to save the images in here, cache in here, and go for it. You save a lot of time. So responsive images, if you detect you're dealing with mobile, instead of serving the big one, you serve the small one. But it's not getting the big one and changing your generation, uh, a new one in here with that. OK? okay. Thank you very much. the solution or is it just uh, how is it you be calculated actually it caches everything so yes so for instance the second time I access this either will be a, a file system version already or a Redis uh, cache backend there's a cache because we're talking about uh, a solution that needs to, to handle lots of traffic okay Thank you very much. Thank you.